On that day of Pentecost, they were gathered and they spoke each other's languages, and they understood. It's hard to imagine because sometimes we are speaking the same language, and still we cannot understand each other. We each have different experiences that inform our viewpoints. We have different patterns of communicating, different assumptions about the world. We even sometimes understand words differently. I am from the South. I have lost my drawl, so you may not know it, but it's true. So when I say that I want a Coke, you may not know that I may want a Dr. Pepper or a Sprite instead of an actual Coca-Cola in a red can. But seriously, we could spend a long time talking about things like, what does grace actually mean to us? What do we mean when we say God? Or even what on earth the Holy Spirit actually is? We yearn to understand each other, but it is hard. There's a phrase that people sometimes use to comfort each other. Maybe you've heard it before, maybe someone said it to you. I know what you're going through. Now when you're going through a rough patch and someone says that to you, and you know that that person really does know, it feels like the best thing in the entire world, that you are not alone. Now my mom died when I was a teenager, and I often had that lonely feeling, convinced that my friends could not possibly understand or comfort me. But when I met peers my age who had also lost a parent, and they said, I know what you're going through, it felt like a revelation, a divine miracle. I was not actually alone, and there were people who understood me. But there have been other times in my life when people have casually said, oh, I understand, without really understanding at all. And I get that sort of suspicious feeling inside and that thought in my head that's like, no, you really don't. And that doesn't feel great. We do yearn to be understood in that deep and real, authentic way. But there can often be distance and space between us. We miss each other. We fail to understand. So how do we get on the same page? How can we be like those disciples, all together in one place? Is it even possible to really understand each other and to build that deep community. Pentecost, I think, shows us that it is possible, and it is not just possible, but it is what God desires for us, and it is what God is doing in the world even now. On the day of Pentecost, they were gathered in one place. They came from many places, in fact, from all the places that were known at that time, from the whole world. And the Spirit moved and rushed in and made them speak, and not just speak each other's languages, but understand each other. The miracle was not that they spoke each other's languages, but the thing that astounded them so much was that though they were speaking in different languages, they all understood each other. Everyone was understood just as they were. And so, on Pentecost, we see what God desires. Community, understanding, being together. And we hear Peter preaching about it. He calls back to the words of Joel. God said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and all will share visions men and women, young and old, slaves and free, all people. And that's what happened on that day. The Spirit poured out on everyone from all their different places, and they were together. The other thing is that God does not erase the differences between them, but provides the means to understanding. 
Those people that day could say, we can understand. And it was true in that deep down, authentic way. We often are troubled by the differences between us, by all the space that feels impossible to cross. But God is not troubled by our difference. On that day at Pentecost, we see that God declares our differences essential and beautiful and good. And that what God wants is that in our differences, we would be together. So is that possible? Was that just a day long ago, never to be repeated again? We know how divided our world is. We know how impossible that distance can seem. But the other thing about Pentecost is that the Holy Spirit was given, and the Holy Spirit is still with us. It wasn't just a one-time event, it was more the precipitating event for all the events that would follow. We have the Spirit. The Spirit is our helper and advocate, given to us by Jesus to be Christ's continued presence with us. The Spirit is what moves among us and helps us connect to one another. We may not be able to speak everyone else's languages, but the Spirit is desperately working around and between all of us, trying to bring us together. There's a marriage therapist named John Gottman. He talks about an interesting concept. He calls it bids for connection. Those are small moments where one partner reaches out to another for attention or affirmation, or any kind of positive connection. It can be a smile, a question, a comment, even as simple as how do I look, or did you hear about whatever. It's like when kids, as they so often say, mom, dad, look at me. We do these little things all day long with all the people in our lives. And so John Gottman did a study of newlyweds, and after six years, he found that those people who stayed together in their marriages turned toward each other 86% of the time, while the couples who were divorced answered those bids only 33% of the time. So the advice he gives is this, turn towards, not away. So what if we could really see how much we all long to be understood. What would our world look like if we felt the power of the Holy Spirit enabling us to turn towards one another and to keep trying to understand, to keep trying to come to that same place? I think of the Holy Spirit as the thing that is between us all and connecting us. Of course, it is more than that. And on Pentecost, I have this image in my head of these little flames that are on all of our heads. And what if, as we go about our lives, we could see that we each have the Spirit and that the Spirit wants us to connect and to be together and to understand. What if, with all of our little flames, we turned toward one another and built community, and all of our little flames added up to a great fire that could transform the world? What would our lives look like? I think true community is possible. It feels really hard to believe sometimes, but the Spirit is with us. It is the day of Pentecost all over again, and we each have the Holy Spirit. So wherever you find yourself in your life, turn toward one another. Turn toward connection and listen for the Spirit calling you to join others. The Spirit will help you and will guide you. Listen especially hard to those that you do not understand and would not normally connect with. But all those people that we struggle with, 
they each have the Holy Spirit working with them too. We need the connection and the understanding that the Spirit can work in our lives. And the world really desperately needs us to be the people moving toward one another, crossing those bridges of distance and letting the Spirit work in the world. Let us all be together in one place. Amen.